number three under new business.
the new principal at the LP Borough. A business teacher was moved to secretarial. And at the junior high, a beyond, beyond valuable ed tech was moved into a secretarial position. Um, if they don't find a way to put her back into her position, this town has lost another huge asset in the math department. Ten of these positions are still waiting to be filled. We're less than a month away from school. And actually, I think that's probably up to 11 with the announcement today of the new 5th through 8th science math position. I am very concerned. I have two kids at this school. I'm very, very concerned. Most of these positions were at MJHS. <coughs> Apparently, I knew more when I was talking about just from the, the tone of the school system. And mark my words, there will be more. How many more valuable people are we going to allow to walk out the doors? How many more are going to be pushed out the doors? Hopefully none. But you need to have an idea that there's a bigger problem here than you're recognizing. There have been a lot of rumors going around. I hate rumors. I try really hard when I hear a rumor to go to the source and ask them myself. And quite a few of you have gotten phone calls from me saying, I've heard this, what can you tell me? I'd like a little bit of clarification. Was a junior high math position considered last week for cutting and has that been made final? Apparently, it's still in the works. Junior high did not meet AYP this year for the first time, I understand. And yet we're cutting math positions. It met in reading, but not in math. You need to think very carefully about that. They need more support, not less. And I'm, I don't know, maybe a five through eight is what is needed. But by all means, the fifth and sixth. I requested a month, actually in June, I requested from the board a report regarding a correlation between investigations math and a drop in AYP. Anybody remember me requesting that? And I was assured that I would get that report. Still waiting. Investigations math is probably one of the worst things that's happened to this district. And if we don't find a way to get our kids back to traditional math, be prepared because it's going to take decades to recover from. And I think you can, you don't have to take my word as a parent, ask the math department. And it appears that we don't seem to like to ask the people who are in the know what they're talking about. Very good at deciding when we don't really know what we're talking about. <clears throat> Is a guidance position at the junior high possibly going to be cut to half time? Again, we pretty much answered that. Was Jay Barry asked? Was she consulted? Did you look at how much time she spends with those junior high kids? I know there were many times that I'd call her, I'd have a question about my son's IEP, and I'd say, I need to meet with you, and she'd have to put me off for a little bit because she had so many meetings going on. I really question the wisdom in that move right there to cut that. And is it true that the AD and MA, and I was not at this meeting, and I told the gentleman that a Sunday night meeting was not a good idea, I attend church. And I was not happy that he chose to have a Sunday night parent meeting. And he apologized, and I thanked him for that. But it was uh, passed on to me that he stated that if we didn't pass the next budget, that um, sports might get cut. And if he did say that, which I heard was said at the meeting, who told him that? These are some of the rumors that are going around, and here's an opportunity for the board to discuss some rumors and talk on this with us. First of all, I'd like to say, please, my lack of attendance at budget meetings, town meetings, it does not translate to inattention. Um, I would love to be able to jump on our district website and just kind of peruse that line item budget myself, have a chance to look things over, kind of look at my own mind where things are going. Um, I know during my term that I spent as a director on this board. Um, the last year was very hectic. It was turning MSAD 67 into RSU. Um, 
Prior to that, though, the focus of the board, the main focus of the board, was to always try to improve public relations. We went out of our way and talked <coughs> frequently about we needed to listen to the voters. We were on this board because we had been voted into place, and we were the voice of our community. Folks, your communities have rejected a responsibly, fiscally sound budget three times. Three times. The biggest naysayers annually even agree your budget looks good. The budget is being turned down not because it is not a fiscally sound budget. It is a lack of faith. It is a vote of no confidence. Is it deserved? I, I don't know. I'm not into he said, she said, this took place, that took place. Whether it is perception, whether it's reality, folks, you need to improve what you're doing with your communities. You need to listen. I can guarantee you if you stopped long enough and heard, what really is being said here is about administrative salaries, administrative positions, how things are being handled behind the scenes, um, folks, I guarantee you, if you changed a few of those things, that budget would pass tomorrow with a huge margin. I might be wrong, but I doubt it. Um, please, go back to thinking that your voice is there because you represent your district and you represent the communities. Listen to what your folks are telling you. This is not an all-encompassing, the teachers are upset and the teachers are pushing this. This district is a big employer. It's one of the biggest employers in this, in this, in this town and in our district. Between the hospital, the school, the mill, it's the biggest tax-paying base we have. You need to listen to what they're saying, um, whether it's the teachers, whether it's the hospital, whether it's the mill. They're all telling you the same thing. Please listen. Uh, the uh, medical profession, uh, 
Uh, Lantier, our school uh, physician, participated in the interviews. Norma Dill, who was retired. Shannon Dill, ironically, will take Norm, uh, Norma Dill's place. There's no relation that I know. Um, and Jerry Davis will take Tammy Kirsch's position at the um, In the central office, we have done some regrouping. We have uh, Cindy retired as of July 31st. And we have uh, brought on Judy Junkins as a new Central Office staff member. We um, are revamping job descriptions and we'll do some cross-training. So um, some of those lines will be blurred by Judy's picked up by uh, individuals who are available. Sandy Mulligan will take charge of the um, district general ledger and the finances, and she'll also continue with our community.
uh, interviewing or finishing up. We have one LA position left. Uh, the guidance is pretty much um, all but uh, signing papers. We're all set with that. Uh, we still have a science and a math science position that we need to fill, and I'm hoping to do that either by the end of the week or the uh, first of next week. Um, three uh, people that I have, I mean, uh, board approval, um, and two of them were actually assigned today, Courtney and Schreiber. Um, she would be a 5 8 in, uh, instrumental music teacher. She's a graduate from um, Hermann High School, graduated from the University of Maine in 2012. Um, she lives in Bangor, and she is very well versed in many different uh, instruments, but her favorite is the flute. Svetlana Azarov, which probably a lot of you know, because I understand that she had uh, sub uh, here last year in 84. She was a 1994 graduate of Kaza Parochial Institute in uh, Kazakhstan, where she got her master's, her bachelor's and master's degree in history. Um, and like I said, she's been here for a couple of years. She also substituted in Holden and Bangor. Uh, one of the stands for a very difficult position that she had in Bangor. Uh, Michael McDonald, not the famous one, um, but uh, he uh, comes from us from uh, um, graduated from Ellsworth High School in 2007. Um, he is going to be our grade 8 ELA teacher. And he um, lives in Holden with his wife and two daughters and loves to do uh, a lot of outdoor things. And uh, I think his favorite panel is zip lining um, and skydiving, which he just did. He's excited about the program. Very um, energetic, dynamic guy. I think he's going to do well for us. Um, Chris, um, uh, Cowan, our assistant principal at AB, couldn't make it tonight, but he's been very busy doing uh, inventory of uniforms. Um, football players will be issued equipment on August 15th. Um, first practice for football will be on August 20th. Field hockey, soccer, and cross country practice will be beginning on September 4th. And the annual parent happy meeting will be held the nights of open house. And um, I was just informed that um, the open house for, um, not, I wasn't just informed this, but um, I know it was mentioned the 29th, but open house for us is Wednesday, August 29th, and Thursday, um, August 30th. So I think we're going to be able to work on that. And uh, a lot of things are going on in the facilities. Um, Dave may have more to add, but uh, Janet, Tutorial staff is working real hard getting ready. Um, a lot of carpets need to be in place, floors being waxed. Um, um, Gina has us, you know, ready, doing everything we can. Even though she's taking this week off, we're still working hard. And it's well deserved anyway for her. She's doing a great job and so is all the rest. Um, just, uh, we had some windows replaced. Um, Doors, you know, I guess that's maybe kind of some budget things, but uh, um, you ought to come over and see your reflection on the gym floor. Um, they did a really nice job on that. Um, really, um, really good job. Uh, can't wait to get Sarah and see the kids coming the first day. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Gilman?
um, for students that can't you can't have texts or, or teachers or anyone it has to be someone that they actually send um, to our school to provide some math and literacy to to their kids to decide to use it. So there will be some information with our parents if, if they would like to do that. Um, so like I said, we'll be coming back to the committee. I've had some staff come in and kind of give me some great ideas from so for some new parent nights that we have um, kind of upcoming for next year. One of the ones that we thought we might be kind of fun is having a magic school bus um, event where we would actually go get up parents and students and bring them to the school and have a literacy and a math night and just so something kind of fun. We'll feed them and kind of get a nice outing for the kids and their parents. So we were um, very uh, kind of patted on the back um, by the uh, folks in our state consultant who works with the SIPs um, concerning how many parent nights that we had. He says that he uses a lot of examples that you know a lot of the teachers had um, you know had come up with and just goes to show you know, how many they were in the turnout many nights and we wanted to increase that. And we obviously saw we had our books for blankets and we had over 400 people in the gym, which was awesome. So that's just something for um, we're painting in the school right now, and if you get a chance to come over and see it, it's so fresh, it's very clean, there's some pictures up there, um, I have glue on my hands, I don't think it's going to come off, um, but I think there's like 72 doors and we have two left, so been there for the past two weeks, painting doors, painting walls, um, Holly Layton, um, our art teacher, we've been talking about putting up some neat things in the hallways for the kids. So we kind of had a vision talking about our fish, but our fish philosophy, but at the same time we're kind of the school of learners. There's different sized fish, they're different colors, like we want you know, uh, as we learn at different rates and we're all individual when it comes to um, our educational plan. So she's got some really great ideas, so um, we're very excited for that. Um, it's been amazing having Patrice. Um, I'm very excited for the upcoming year knowing how much she is going to be of help um, with all the RTI and PDIS things that we need to put into place along with the SIPs. There's a number of data that we'll need to be collecting um, that we may need to do um, because of the AYP, whether it's fair or not, and whether it goes away at some point. I don't know if this is what we're going to need to do now. So there's a lot of work going into it. Um, we're very excited for the fires that Um, 
Our history, we want to focus more on inquiry versus content learning. And so our focus is going to be more on asking those questions and, and trying to bring about questions that the students might have on why we learn what we learn in history and why is it important. Um, math, we're going to um, take the recommendation of the Common Core Standards and do the two consecutive math classes. Um, we're going to reach for algebra 1, 2, and geometry. Uh, my students have been working on math all summer long, um, averaging about eight students. There's about half of my students. The other half have been keeping in contact with me throughout the school year. They've been working. I had one return to me this uh, week. He just got done haying for the year. So he kind of came in with a sigh this morning. He was a little late as well. We had to talk about that. Um, electives, things students love or need to do to progress in life. The arts are in the community. Uh, so if anyone from the community has any arts that they are aware of in the community, that would also be helpful. Uh, give me a call and we'll get them to a studio. That would be fun. Um, and other than that, um, we're looking pretty good as far as our curriculum goes. I have 14 students enrolled. One's going to join me, though, the 4th of September. Um, he didn't want to participate in the summer program. Eight, uh, I already said that. Let's see. The Tamburg system has been working great. Nick Cullen is a teacher from Stearns High School. Um, he's been teaching through the Tamburg system, and he's been wonderful. Um, I love math, but I'm not so good at explaining it. So if I can see him explain it and I can help the kids, that works beautifully for me. Um, I just want to follow up. We did hike um, Chim up to Chimney Pond, and one of my students returned that following week to hike all the way to the top. So I give major kudos to him for you know going and doing that on his own. Um, <coughs> I'm looking forward to the help of uh, a unique individual who can help me out on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, Jesse, if you could just stand up and say your last name for me. Yep, uh, my name is Jesse Casey's. <laughs> Jesse is going to be helping me out with my uh, with my health and PE. Um, the Carlton Project didn't have a health, a health person on our uh, team, so Jesse will be a great addition to that. Thank you, Jesse. I look forward to working with you. Um, and hopefully with added hands in the classroom, I can strive to get up to 20 students or maybe more this year. So I look forward to that. And I've had five applications in the last two weeks. Um, so word is getting out, and I look forward to the recommendations that Henry will have for me in September. Be happy to answer any questions that anybody would have. Any questions for Chris? Thank you, sir. Thank you for your good work. Thank you. Thanks to him. Thank you. Uh, I've been around school to see you've had a pretty good summer. I uh, got a lot of work done, so we a little bit more to go, but I uh, feel confident right now we'll have everything done in time for the kids to show up. Um, the staff has done extremely well this summer, uh, worked really well together. Um, they're kind of hot summer, you guys have noticed, and uh, got a lot of work done, so really I'm taking my hat off for those guys who are doing a great job. Uh, buses will be ready to roll, we'll do some work over there, we'll do some work together. But, uh, as high school uh, tennis courts are playable now, so you guys can wait to put on the tennis courts. I'll take the hands of that. Come on, you did a great job on that. Uh, those are available. Um, a lot of pain going around in this school. A um, few doors and places have to go. These come together great. Uh, Elber, <coughs> as Rachel mentioned, we a lot of pain. Probably had uh, 20 different people paying me over the sign of volunteers and whatever. Uh, a lot of student that is really. Uh, we're working with Rick on the air, Pat, for them. So I took a picture to try to give you an idea of what the new book the school is. So I'm going to do a justice to give you a little bit of idea. I remember what it looked like for the past few months. So we decided to do a little bit of a coming along very well. Um, junior high, the, uh, uh, as Lowell mentioned, the basketball uh, courts came out extremely well. Um, there's some windows here, so we have a little bit of energy. Situation. Um, just, uh, everybody's doing a good job down there uh, with cleaning, um, and everything should be ready to roll. 
$2, the student lunch to $2.25, and the adult lunch to $2.75. So the board will have to think about that and make a motion. We do have, unfortunately, you'll have to do it today because the application is due in by the 15th. So uh, her concern is, yes, uh, you know, it is an area where um, family finances are difficult, uh, but she felt with the 20 cent increase at the elementary level the, the K-12 level and then 25 cents at the adult level would be the program at this point without actually going as high as the state average. And that is full price lunch um, because, uh, well, that is for full price lunch for any of those students that are not eligible for free and reduced lunch. Um, what percentage of the people actually pay for the price? Thank you. 
previous? Should it be printed on the It will at our next meeting. The next yeah. But so she needs to be able to send that information to the law. It needs to be okay. okay. It needs to be committed to something so I can have the attorney. But, didn't but, have a claim, so it's not in gender tonight. Right, because I didn't know if you were going to increase the increase or what the board was going to choose to do with the budget. <coughs> Any questions now about the budget this, before we make this commitment? Well, we'll see that we should decrease it. Okay. Okay.
discussed it from six to seven tonight. Um, if six to seven, we could have changed the number. That's the only reason we made the motion for that number was we didn't change that number from six to seven. The public has let us know all the questions. There's still some that we're going to answer, but we need to get a budget in place. What we were saying is we ought to know the money, so we need a budget in place so there's no chance that the state's holding back their share. $520,000 a month. We can't, we can't take that. We can't sustain that. If, if we get in that situation, we're going to lose people, we're going to lose programs, and that's not holding our school forward in a good direction. We, we need to pass a budget and not put ourselves in that position where they can even think about doing something like that. That's not to mention uh, the curtail in the middle of the year that's being talked about. So, I mean, I, we need a budget in place. That's why that number that we think so we just changed it. We've had three meetings, and we need to make sure everybody goes away with this number that, that's open. This is where we're going to stand. Because I don't want to be in a situation of having to find a half million dollars. Because the budget is about money. I understand, you know, there's some
you're right in hindsight, but it's a it, it, point. Right. In, pra in, in practical application, it probably didn't work either. So. We, we didn't know what the number was going to be that one was on the, on the agenda. I mean, you could have, we could have put it back to 12.3, we could have dropped it to 12. And See, my, my, my point is this is completely a proper motion by the law Rules Board. There was nothing out of war about this motion. And because it wasn't on the agenda, that there was nothing. We did it in a public forum. It was absolutely public. So. According to Robert's rules of order, the motion is in order. And it, I don't I, I feel the tension, but I don't feel the problem because it's completely in order. There, there shouldn't be any tension. Okay. Okay. Shouldn't be, no, it's, it's, it's completely, completely in order. Because you could word it in anticipation of the outcome of the budget workshop. Do we make a motion to do leave it there? In other words, it's it just a matter of form. The sooner you get it in fair anticipation of an action and better off.
we invited them to come, but unfortunately, we're not going to make that a motion to accept or not accept the superintendent's recommendation to appoint Christine Gordon as Title I math teacher at L.P. Burr for the 2012-2013 school year. We have a motion. Motion to accept. Second. Exactly which ones came. 
The substitute teacher one we had taken up as a first reading back on April 25th, but um, policy says that they have to be on the state policy as well. That you have to vote on them in the eight-week period, and we're out past that. So we, everything's coming back up for the first reading. And also in this one, we took out the sections on procedures, and we will put them in the substitute packet. So any other changes you have are in the red. But you should have noticed if you went back and looked at what you had back in May, or April rather, that there's three sections taken out. The bullying, again, all of the changes are in red. Just added a little bit of language there. And the um, two new cross-references. The student computer and internet use and internet safety, this came about because of the, the internet safety section is all new, and that was based on some uh, legislation that came out. So that internet safety section is new. Um, the form, the only change we made was to keep adding the word internet safety every time the form came up. And the computer and internet use rules, uh, anytime there was anything about safety, that has all been added. The compulsory ages, attendance ages, the change is made that all children are required from their sixth birthday instead of their seventh birthday. That was the only change we made. Is that change again with legislation? Um, truancy, again, the change is the age from seven back to six years of age. Truancy procedures, we added some, uh, I think a couple of notes in there uh, that describe um, the legal standards. The use of physical restraint and seclusion. This is the thing I don't say this properly, you can correct me. This was a major change of chapter 33, which uh, tells you how you will run special education. It was uh, all children. Okay, all children. So this, it refers to all children. It also, um, the title and the definitions of what physical restraint and seclusion would be like. So uh, she came to the meeting and explained it all to us. And we went with all of the new language that the state set us, the attorneys. Anything you'd like to add about that? No, what's, that's from MMSA and Drummond and Woodson developed that. It comes
and these are all new policies that we do not have. Um, they come from MSMA, and um, the school board evaluation, we kind of did it. We were doing it, but we didn't have a policy. Plus, if you remember, we had, this was a recoding because we had BBAB, I think it's complaints or something, so this is a recoding of that one. Uh, the employee use of social media, social networking. Um, our uh, administrators have, have reviewed all of this. This was one of our ones that was on a previous uh, meeting in April. And it's uh, the administrative team has been looked at and looked at by the lawyers. Um, animals in schools, there's been some concern around uh, Children with, um, children with allergies and the use of the animals in schools and the people handling the schools and the service animals in schools to make sure that, that they are actual service animals and not just somebody coming in saying, well, I need this animal for whatever reason. So these animals have to be certified as service animals. And sportsmanship and hiring and evaluation of coaches. We do all of this, but we really didn't have policies on it, so these are new policies from MSMA that we looked at and would recommend it all. Any questions on these?
in the student, would it be the elementary or the student committee? Elementary. For student. you. No. Student. Student. So, like it's 205 now, the, the asked increase is 225, and the statewide average currently is 259. So it's still quite low. Well, now, below the state. Side note, and he said you know, something that uh, we commended. Uh, uh, Mrs. Smith, on before, uh, we do run in the black, and that is a rare occurrence in the state. 
state and whatnot. Very much kudos for her. She, she has a very good program there. And in spite of having a good program, she does run in the black. Mm -hmm. Kudos for that. The timeliness is everything. Isn't, isn't there some other regulations either in place or going to be in place regarding the review of the nutritional content of the food? All of our food is a minimum requirement. Right, and that's not where we, where we want to be. No, so if we up the price, will they be able to exceed the minimum requirement for the nutrition? No, because the, food, the cost of the food.
then our next regular board meeting will probably be September 5th. In between there, we're going to put it. No action was taken. I make the motion to adjourn. Okay. Yeah, I'll take a motion to adjourn. So Dave and Carolyn. Dave and Carolyn. And all those in favor? Unanimous. And we're done there. What's it say up there, Dave? Ten on two. There's a white light that's shining. Next, next Wednesday night. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.